Hello, hello everyone. Hi, hello. Hopefully you can all see me and hear me. If you can see me and hear me, please write yes, I can see you. Yes, I can hear you in the chat. Okay, so I know. <laughs> okay. Um, and hello as well. Say hello. Ooh. Okay, the chat has. There we go. I'm back in the chat. Hi, Alwi. Hi, Victoria. Great to see you. Uh, oh, YouTube's telling me something. Hi, Josh. Hi, Magdalena. Nice to see you. I see some people from Patreon, which is really wonderful. Uh, the arduous journey of becoming Jane. What an interesting name. Is that name from a book or something? Hi, Alice. Hi. How are you, Aloui? I'm doing well. So um, it's really great to see you all again. It's been a long time. So let's officially begin because it is four o'clock now. Welcome to the Easy Stories in English live stream. I am Ariel Goodbody, your host for this show. So as I was just saying, it's been a really long time since we had a live stream, hasn't it? I've obviously talk to you in the comments, on Telegram. Some of you I've talked to during Elevenses with Ariel on my Patreon, but it's been a really long time since we've sat down and just talked one-to-one -one <laughs> like this. It's not really one-to-one. -one. It's more like one to 100, right? There's one of me and, well, currently 21 of you. <laughs> okay. Hi, apprends avec Elisa. Apprends avec Elisa in the comments is um, a French teacher. She makes some videos to help people learn French and I actually watched some of her videos the other day. So if you're learning French, Go to the comments now and click on Apprends avec Elisa's channel and you can learn some French. Hello, Valentina. Hello, uh, Worth Wound. I think I know who that is. Ooh. Hello, Aloui. Al Alawi, sorry, Alawi from Morocco. So good that you said that, Alawi, because I want to know. Where in the world is everyone? So first, tell me, where are you? What country, what city, what continent, what part of your house? Maybe you're in the kitchen, maybe you're in the living room. Where are you right now, okay? So I am in the kitchen. Actually, I'm not technically at my house, I'm at my girlfriend's house. But I basically live here now. <laughs> I'm moving here in August, so yeah. So I basically live here. So I'm in her kitchen. Her house is in the southwest of the UK in Devon. So Devon is very, very south and very, very west. And it's very near Cornwall, which is the kind of the southwestern tip of the UK. So when you look at the UK on a map, you see this kind of pointy bit at the bottom left, and that is Cornwall. So we basically live in Cornwall, which is lovely because it's right next to the sea. So we get to go to the beach in summer and it's very nice. I'll just write that down. Cornwall, UK. Okay, let me read your comments. 
Hello, Lale Roya. Lale is in Turkey. Hi, Alessandra. Uh, Roya is from Iran. Okay, we've had quite a few um, people from Iran. So I guess I should say quite a few Iranians recently in the Telegram group, which is fantastic. Josh is in Turkey. Uh, Magdalena is in Poland, which uh, specifically the city of Krakow, which is in Europe. Very good, Magdalena, but you didn't tell me which room you are in. I'm going to guess you're in the living room. Let me know. <laughs> Valentina is, or Valentina, is from Modena, Italy. I don't know Modena, but I'm sure it's lovely. Hi, Vito. Roya is in bed. <laughs> Just woke up. Well, this is a great way to start the day. Hopefully, I can give you lots of energy to start your day. I slept in very late today. I slept a long time this morning. Victoria is at home in Berlin, Germany. Wonderful. I hope the weather is nicer in Berlin than here. Here, it is just raining. It started raining just when I started the stream. Ooh, how sad. Um, the arduous journey of becoming Jane is in Vietnam. Ah, okay. I really want to go to Vietnam. And they are in their bedroom and it is nearly midnight. Wow. So you're really burning the midnight, midnight oil. So that's an expression. I'll just write it down. Burning the midnight oil. When you burn the midnight oil, it means you are working hard really late at night, yeah? Like you're staying up all night working. And so, of course, if you're working late at night, you need some light to help you see things. So in the past, now we have electric lights, but in the past, they used oil and they burned the midnight oil to give them light so they could read and study. So um, this uh, listener from Vietnam is burning the midnight oil to watch the live stream, which is very good. I approve. Or maybe you just go to bed late. That's also possible. <laughs> Emma is from a small city near Venice in Italy and she is also in the kitchen. Woo! The nice thing about being in the kitchen is the fridge, the refrigerator, is right there. So if I want a snack or a drink while I talk to you, I can just go and get one. That's really nice. Vito is in Brazil. Fantastic. Um, Apprends avec Elisa, or I should just, I should just say Elisa, is from Spain and she lives in Cabra, which is in the south of Spain. I love the south of Spain. I was in Seville, a big city in the south of Spain at the end of 2019 and it was gorgeous, lovely. Alawi is from the city of Tangier, uh, which is in Morocco, it's in the north. Um, thank you for inviting me. Worth a Wound is from Germany and is also in the kitchen. Yay, kitchen party. The kitchen is really the best place to sit because you have all of the food just waiting for you. Alice, or maybe Alice, I don't know, is from Poland and she is in her living room. Fantastic. Hi, Art Zadworny. I'm guessing from your name, you're also in Poland. Mr. Colin Full is from Switzerland and is on the train. We have someone from Egypt, Zuzana from Hungary. I just want to say we have a similar name in English. We have the name Susanna, but I think the Hungarian version sounds so lovely. Zuzana, it just sounds so nice to me. I love it. It's one of my favorite names. So hi, Zuzana. Um, Ale is from Peru. I really want to go to Peru. Oh my goodness. From Trujillo, which is the city of eternal spring. Wonderful. So does that mean you have nice spring weather all year round? That sounds great. I should go there. Um, Magdalena 
I thought Magdalena was in the living room, but nope, she's in the garden. Hi, Leo from Taiwan. Um, we have another person from Krakow. Uh, Alawi, no, I have not been to Morocco. Hi, Peachy. Uh, yeah, so Raya asks, what about uh, calling someone a night owl? So that's a different expression. So a night owl, so an owl is this bird that uh, is awake at night and owls have big eyes and ears and owls move their necks like this and owls go woo, woo. now when we call a person a night owl we are saying that they like to stay awake at night and that they don't like waking up early they like staying up late but if you're a night owl it's normal it's not a problem if you're burning the midnight oil, then it's something special. It's like you're deliberately working really hard. So it's a bit different from being a night owl. Hi, Dark from Turkey. Dark says they love my podcasts. Thank you very much. Uh, Piotr Bajkowski. I also love the name Piotr. Piotr is one of my favorite Polish names because, of course, we have the name Peter. In English, but Peter just doesn't sound very fun. But Piotr, I don't know. To me, it just sounds fun. Okay, um, Peachy is in Indonesia. Fantastic. We have, honestly, we have so many people here. We have like a half of the world in one place. It's brilliant. So, you've probably heard on the podcast that I am releasing a book. If you came to the live stream and you didn't know that I am, a re I am releasing a book, I am shocked, I am very surprised because I've mentioned the book about 10 or 20 times. <laughs> but I'm gonna talk about it again, woo! <laughs> because I'm really excited about launching it. And um, I thought I would just tell you where I am in the process. Releasing a book, it's quite complicated. It's quite difficult. It requires a lot of new skills for me. And it's quite scary because I can just pray that everyone will buy the book. But I really don't know if that will happen. So we'll see. But first, I want to show you the cover because I've got the final version of the cover from my cover designer and I love how it looks. It looks so good. So, ta-da! Hey, here, are, here is the beautiful cover to my new book, Easy Stories in English. So this book is coming out on the 19th of July and it is, it is a collection of 10 short, 10 short stories from well, nine from the podcast and one new one. And the new one is Cinderella. You might know the famous fairy tale, Cinderella. And there are four levels. So I can just show you. There is a version for beginners, a version for pre-intermediate learners, a version for intermediate learners, and a version for advanced learners. However, you might like to read the book several times in different versions. Why? Well, it's the same stories, but at four different levels. So maybe you're a pre-intermediate student. You like the pre-intermediate levels of the podcast, episodes of the podcast. But if you read the pre-intermediate version of the book, and then the intermediate version, you'll probably understand a lot because you already know the stories. What's the difference between the levels? Well, in each level, there is new vocabulary. In the higher levels, the sentences are longer. I use more complicated grammar and I add more details. So you actually know more about the story, the characters and the world in the higher levels. So several people have read the book for me to give me comments and they have said that they really enjoyed 
rereading the same story in several levels. So that's the kind of special thing with this book. Um, very soon, possibly tomorrow, I will also have the paper version of the book. Right now, I can only show you the digital cover. So this book will be available as an ebook, an electronic book, but also as a paperback, as a paper, a physical book. And sometime this week, I will be getting the paper copies to check for any mistakes. So next week, because there's going to be another live stream next week, I can show you the paper versions. I'm so excited. Oh my God. Okay, let me just check the comments. Um, Alawi says, a question, if possible, how can I be motivated to listen to the podcast? So I'm gonna do questions and answers a bit later, um, but that's a great question, okay? Uh, Raya says, congrats on the book. Thank you very much, Raya. Uh, we've got some happy emojis. Raya says, cats and dogs, dab. Yes, the reason there's a cat and dog on the cover is of course because of the stories Doggo and Kitty. Doggo and Kitty do their laundry, Doggo and Kitty bake a cake, and Doggo and Kitty tear their trousers. I almost forgot. Those are three stories from the podcast that are in the books. And we all love Doggo and Kitty, right? Who doesn't love cute dogs and cute cats? So I had to put them on the cover of the book. Okay, Peachy has a question. I want to hear your opinion about The Simpsons. Do you watch the series? If you do, uh, let me know. W-D-Y-T. What do you think? That's what that means. Okay. I, I didn't know what W-D-Y-T meant. It means what do you think? Gotcha. Okay. Um, Alawi, the... Um, oh, Alawi, I think, is asking about The Simpsons. Vito asks, how can I get an autograph? So an autograph is when someone... You take a piece of paper to a famous person and they write their name on the paper. Um, I don't do autographs yet. Maybe in the future, I will do autographs. What you maybe want is a signed copy. So you want me to sign my name in a copy of the book. Right now, that is not possible. But in future, maybe in one year or two years, when it's safe with coronavirus, I am going to do live events for Easy Stories in English. And of course, I will sign books. I will autograph books at those live events. Um, and maybe I can sign them and mail them, post them to people. I don't know. I haven't thought of that yet. Okay. Um, Dark says, can we buy your paper book from different countries? Yes. So I will be publishing it online through um, Amazon and Ingram Spark, which basically connects to lots of different online bookshops around the world. You should be able to buy it in every country, but in some countries it might be a bit expensive because basically the book is print on demand, which means Someone orders a copy, someone buys a copy online, and then in a factory, they print the book, they create the paper book, and then send it. Some countries, they have to send it quite a long distance, so it can cost more. Okay, student Cindy says, hi from Ecuador, you're the best, and I love your podcasts. Oh, thank you so much, Cindy, you're lovely. And Vito says, I'm famous now. Um, I'm not famous. I'm like, I'm not famous. Don't be silly. Okay. So yes. So as I said, the paper versions of the book will be coming this week and I will show them to all of you. Otherwise, the book is basically ready to be launched on the 19th, which is really exciting. By the way, I'm doing a launch party on the 19th of July at the same time as this live stream. If you come to the launch party, you could win a copy of all 
four books. So I am going to do a giveaway, a competition during the launch party and maybe three, five, I don't know how many, but a number of people who come to the party will win a copy of all four books in paper format and I will send them wherever. So it doesn't matter what country you are in, you can win the books and I will send them to you. And why not? I will sign, wait, no, I probably can't sign them, unfortunately, but um, I will send you a free copy of the books. Um, you just have to come to the launch party and you will have a chance to win. So really, really looking forward to that. Okay, I think it's time we did some questions and answers. What do you think? So I am just going to bring up, boom, here we go. I've written some of the questions and answers already. So we have two questions. I'm going to start with these. And while I'm talking, just add more questions, okay? There is a delay in the stream. So it takes a bit longer for me to see your answers, your questions, sorry. So um, I might answer it a bit slowly, but I will try to answer all your questions, okay? So let's get started. Question number one. How can I be motivated to listen to the podcast? Now, I'm not sure if this means my podcast, Easy Stories in English, or podcasts for learning English in general. Personally, I love podcasts because they're really convenient, right? I can listen to them while I clean the house. I can listen to them on the bus or in the car. I can listen to them in bed. So I really recommend that. If you want to listen to more podcasts for learning English, find things that you like doing at the same time, right? Find things that are fun for you that you can do. Oh, sorry. I'm going to move a bit. At the same time as listening. No, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Yes. Okay. That, this is better. Find things you can do at the same time. However, the most important thing is that you have fun. Because when we have fun and enjoy what we are listening to and reading, we learn a lot more. So if you don't find a podcast fun and you don't feel motivated to listen to it, then don't. Listen to something else or read something else. But find ways to learn English that are fun for you. Okay? Um, we have another question from Vito. I'll just add that. So, another question. Sorry, I should write down who asks the questions. Peachy asked this question. Peachy asked, I want to hear your opinion about the Simpsons series. Do you watch this series? If you do, let me know. That's let me know. What do you think? This is a new um, acronym for me. So an acronym is when you have like letters that have a meaning like um, TBH is to be honest. So WDYT is what do you think? This is a new one for me. So thank you for teaching me a new word, Peachy. So The Simpsons is a very, very popular series in uh, America and the United Kingdom and in Europe in general. It's a comedy series. It's an animated series from America about a, an average American family. Having said that, The Simpsons was really popular when I was growing up. And when I was growing up, The Simpsons was very funny. It was so funny. We all came home on a Friday and we all sat down to watch the new episode of The Simpsons and we laughed so much. But The Simpsons has been going on for a really long time. I think there's like 25 or 30 seasons now. And the new seasons are not very good. I think after about season 10, it stopped being funny. And now it's just, I don't watch The Simpsons at all. The old Simpsons though is really fantastic. And I still think it's very funny. Okay, 
Vito asks, what is your favorite part when you are doing a podcast? Mm. That's a good question. What is my favorite part? Probably writing the story because I am a writer at heart. You know, that's the most important part of the process for me personally is the writing. However, I also do enjoy when I get to do funny voices like, I'm a big angry monster! Or, I'm a soft little fairy. Oh, I love doing those voices in the podcast. That's also one of my favourite parts. Um, but, I don't know, recording is not so fun because it's a lot of work and I can hurt my voice sometimes while I'm doing it. So I think probably the writing. Okay. Um, okay. The arduous journey of becoming Jane asks, would it be okay if I ask some vocab questions, some vocabulary questions? It is perfectly all right. You may. I find it hard to understand these two words, nauseous and nauseated. Now, I have to say, this is quite a high level question because these words are very, very similar. Um, honestly, if I were to say, what is the difference between I feel nauseous and I feel nauseated? I would say there isn't a difference. They basically mean the same thing, but there is a big difference in the contexts in which we use these words. Nauseous is more of a normal word. By the way, these words mean sick, like you feel sick. You know when you go on a boat and the boat is moving a lot and you feel what you want to be sick? That means you feel nauseous. Um, nauseated is just a bit more polite. It's a bit more formal than nauseous. Um, but we use nauseous when it's just you're literally sick, you feel like you are going to be sick. And then we use nauseated more when it's something that we don't like. Like you saw a comedy show and they made really offensive jokes, like maybe really sexist jokes or really racist jokes. And that made you feel nauseated, yeah? Uh, Hilal says, warm love from Azerbaijan. Lovely Ariel. Thank you very much, Hilal. Mateusz Kapa says, um, let me just copy this question over because it's a bit of a long one. Okay, as students of English, we should focus more on, we should focus on learning more words about particular subjects, like not only knowing the word bird, but knowing more about this bird, about different kinds of birds, like hawks, doves. So hawks and doves are two types of birds. When you're learning vocabulary, a lot of people make a big mistake and they think, I need to know vocabulary about this. So they look for words about that. But here's the thing, knowing the different names of birds is not very important. The only thing that really matters with vocabulary is frequency. Frequency means how often a word appears. So if a word is very frequent, we use it a lot. A very, very frequent word is eat, right? We all use the word eat many times a day because eating is very important, right? So it's a frequent word. It has a high frequency. Bird is quite a high frequency word, but the individual names of birds, like hawks, doves, pigeons, these are not high frequency. Some are higher frequency. Pigeon, in the UK, there are lots of pigeons. So pigeon is a higher frequency word than hawk. So it's probably more important because you hear it more. But that's the great thing the higher frequency words, you will hear more, right? So you will learn them more quickly. So don't worry about, do I know the names of all the different birds? Just, you need to know the names of the most common birds, right? And you will learn that naturally through reading and listening. 
Again, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, oh, I need to learn the names of all the fruits right now. But that's not true. You learn the most frequent ones first, and then you learn the other ones later. It's normal. It's just like how children learn a language. Fantastic question, Mateusz. Thank you for asking that. Um, Dark asks, can you save this live? I want to watch it again later. Yes, this live stream will be saved. So after it is finished, you can watch it on my YouTube channel. Okay? Uh, Ar the Arduous Journey of Becoming Jane says, thank you so much for your explanation. Really appreciated it. Thank you for asking the question. Magdalena says, what do you think about vaccines? Are you going to get vaccinated? Great question. I actually got the first dose of my coronavirus vaccine a few weeks ago. So because I am 28, I got the Pfizer, the Pfizer vaccine. So I had to travel quite far actually to get the vaccine dose and it went very well. And I will get the second dose of the vaccine in September. So clearly I think vaccines are good or I wouldn't get the vaccine. Um, oh, I know, you know, within the last 10 years, there has been a growing movement, a growing group of people who are um, anti-vaxxers. So anti-vaxxers are people who are against vaccines because they believe that vaccines cause various illnesses or that vaccines can cause, um, well, a big belief that many people have is that uh, anti-vaxxers believe that vaccines cause um, autism, which is a neurological difference. So it's basically a way your brain can work differently. And a lot of these anti-vaxxers believe that if children get vaccines, they will get autism. Um, I am autistic. I have autism. Um, I'm pretty sure I didn't get it from vaccines because that is scientifically incorrect. It does not happen. Uh, it's more of a genetic thing and it's not a bad thing. It's not like an illness or like cancer. It's not killing me. It's just my brain works in a different way. So to be honest, I'm, I'm very against the anti-vaxxer movement because I think vaccines do a lot of really good things, right? If we didn't have vaccines, we would have a lot more illnesses in the world. So I think vaccines are very important. Um, Elisa says, the natural order, isn't it? I don't quite understand what you're referring to, Elisa, because there's a bit of a delay. Could you explain what you mean? Okay, Peachy says, you're welcome for the new word, W-D-Y-T, what do you think? Uh, and I'm thankful for your answer. I'm interested in watching The Simpsons because many of the episodes um, have really happened. Yeah, it's like a conspiracy theory. That's really true. So The Simpsons is um, satire. So satire is a form of comedy. Satire is when you make fun of real life. So people often use satire to criticize politicians and the government, right? So they will create stories about crazy things happening in the government. But the problem with satire is sometimes satire becomes real. So The Simpsons had many satirical episodes, many stories about crazy things happening in the government and then those things happened in real life about 10 years later. So it is a bit strange. Hi, we've got Paulina here from Slovenčina Ako Cudzi Jazyk, which is a fantastic channel for learning Slovak. So if you want to learn Slovak, seriously, check out her channel. She's also a good friend of mine. So hi, Paulina. Don't worry for missing the beginning. That's fine. Elisa says, uh, I was talking about the frequency of words. Yeah, it is the natural order, exactly. The more frequent words are the more useful words, 
And because they're more frequent, we learn them more easily. So it really, as long as you're reading and listening to lots of different things, you will learn the high frequency words first. Okay, and also in my podcast, when I do like a beginner story, I focus on really high frequency words like eat, sleep, dance, sing, right? And then I use lower frequency words more in the higher level stories like the intermediate and advanced stories. Petya says, hello from Ukraine. Petya is another uh, Patreon supporter. Great to see you. Give me more questions. Uh, more questions, please. I've run out of questions. So ask me anything you want. You can ask me, uh, I don't know, about my personal life if you want. I might not answer, but you can always ask me. You can ask me about the podcast, about the new book, about the weather, about my opinions on things. Ah, okay. Anime Fights HD asks... Um, what are languages that you consider learning? So I guess this is two questions, right? What languages have I considered learning in the past? And what languages am I considering learning now? So generally, I am a big uh, language nerd, right? A nerd is someone who is really, really interested in one subject like computers or something. And I am a big language nerd. I love languages. So I've tried to learn many different languages and there are so many languages I want to learn. Right now, I am focusing on improving my current languages. So this lo these last few years, I've been working on my French, my Spanish, and my German. But soon I'm going to focus on improving my Japanese because I want to teach Japanese to my girlfriend. Um, but other languages I want to learn, I've been learning a bit of Slovak from Paulina's channel. And I really want to learn Thai because I would love to visit Thailand. And Maybe that's it. Oh, I want to improve my Chinese as well, my Mandarin Chinese at some point. Okay. Um, Magdalena asks, what is your favorite cartoon? Uh, maybe I don't watch cartoons, Magdalena. No, I, I do watch cartoons. That's a hard question though, because right now I don't watch a lot of cartoons. Um, I loved, when I was growing up, I absolutely loved Spongebob Squarepants, which is about this little guy who's like a sponge and um, he laughs like, Aah! that's my best Spongebob laugh. I loved Spongebob Squarepants. I also really loved um, Yu-Gi-Oh, which is a Japanese animated series about card games and magic. What other series did I love? Right now, I my favorite series is probably Peppa Pig. <laughs> Peppa Pig is like a British animated series for very young children, but it's a great way of learning a language because you can watch Peppa Pig in like French or German or Chinese. And the stories are really, really simple. So it's a great way to just learn another language because you can just turn off your brain and watch Peppa Pig. <laughs> okay. Um, Peachy says she would like to see more live streams from you, from me, either from YouTube or Instagram. I have considered going live on Instagram. The only problem is my phone is very bad. My, this is my phone here. It's pretty cheap. So I think if I went live on Instagram, my phone would probably melt. So I might wait until I get a new phone before I do Instagram lives. Victoria asks, I remember you like vampire stuff. Have you seen the True Blood series? Uh, I do love vampire TV shows and vampire films. I haven't actually watched True Blood. But True Blood is based on a series of books called the Sookie Stackhouse, 
novels or the southern vampire mysteries. Anyway, I read two of the books from the series and I thought it was okay. I didn't really enjoy it so much, so I haven't watched True Blood. Um, Mateusz asks, have you read the book uh, 1984 by George Orwell? Nope, I have not read it. I know it's a very famous book, um, but it's not on my list of priorities. It's not a book I'm particularly interested in reading. Right now I'm reading a lot of fantasy, romance and um, queer theory. Uh, so I'll just write that down. Right now I'm reading fantasy, romance and queer theory. So queer theory is like theory about uh, LGBTQ plus people. I'm transgender, so it's quite important for me. Um, ah, Roya asks, there was the 4th of July yesterday in America, in the US. Do you have something like that in the UK? So if you don't know, the 4th of July in America is Labor Day. So it's a holiday that's all about work. But basically, it's just a big excuse to have a party and a barbecue, as far as I understand. We don't have anything really like that in the UK. The 1st of May is International Labour Day, International Workers' Day, but we don't celebrate it in the UK. The Monday or Friday that's closest to that day, we have a national holiday, like we all get a day off, but we don't do anything special. Um, it's just another holiday. So no, we don't really have anything like Labour Day in the UK. Uh, Vito says, I've never tasted bubble tea. Every time I hear about it, I remember your podcast. Yes. So in your brain, I have created a link, an association between easy stories in English and bubble tea. That's fantastic. I'm gonna, it's a bit embarrassing, actually, because I mentioned bubble tea in every episode of the podcast at the very end, but I don't actually drink that much bubble tea anymore. The problem is because I'm living with my girlfriend now, she lives in the countryside. I can't get bubble tea here. The nearest place to get bubble tea is like an hour's drive away. So it's just so inconvenient. It's so difficult to get bubble tea. By the way, if you don't know what bubble tea is, it's like a, it's from Taiwan. It's like a, a, a milk tea drink with ice and sugar. And then it has these little um, balls in the bottom that you can chew on. They're like sugary, really good. So, um... The only time I can get bubble tea now is when I'm in Bath, my hometown, or another city. But um, sometimes I get it and I'm like, uh, you know, I have to be in the right mood to enjoy it. Okay. Um, Kwang says, I don't know, do you remember me? I really like the Doggo and Kitty stories. Yes, Kwang, I remember you very well. Um, to be honest, I really remember your live stream since you didn't stream anymore last year. I think Kwang means they, they really miss the live stream, yeah? Um, just one word, I love you so much. Oh, Kwang, you're so sweet, thank you. Yeah, I'm really sorry it's been so long. I streamed a lot last year and then I stopped for a long time. Mainly I've just been really stressed. Um, I've had a lot of, uh, quite a few stressful months. If you've been listening to all of the latest episodes of the podcast, you know I have taken a break from teaching, a long break, a sabbatical from teaching. And now I feel like I have the energy to do live streams again. But before I just felt so tired and the idea of doing a live stream because it takes a lot of energy, right? Normally when I talk to people, I'm not like this energetic. I don't have this much energy. So um, I really enjoy it, but I have to be in the right mood. Um, Student Cindy says, what do you do when people are mean or rude to you? I feel so sad when people are mean with me online or in the real world. 
This is a really good question. Thank you for asking this, Cindy, because this is something um, I have struggled with. This is a problem I have had throughout a lot of my life, during a lot of my life, you know? I had a, quite a difficult time at school with bullying, like kids being mean to me, kids not being kind to me. Um, and I think it's a serious problem. And I'm a very, very sensitive person. Um, I am a sensitive person. A sensitive person is someone who has a lot of feelings, right? I, I get easily hurt. If people say mean or rude things to me, I feel really bad. And that's true in real life, but also online. Actually, uh, I sometimes get mean comments on easy stories in English or on YouTube. And even if I say, you know, I can say, oh, I don't care. Oh, I can ignore this. No, go away. I can delete the comments, but I still feel it. And I think it's important to, to recognize that. I don't like saying, oh, it's nothing, you know? I say, okay, this is un, un, uncomfortable. I don't like this, but it's just one person, right? I hear so many positive things. I hear so many nice things from most people. And then maybe there are one or two people who are really horrible but they are a very small group and it doesn't matter, you know? I don't make easy stories in English for those people. I don't live for those people. If those people don't like me, it doesn't matter. They can stay out of my life. Of course, when someone is in your life and you see them regularly, you see them often and they're mean to you, that's very hard. That is a lot harder. But anyway, this is a serious topic. Let's let's answer some more questions. <laughs> um, Peachy asks, can you share what methods you use to learn other foreign languages? Well, Peachy, I use the methods that I recommend all of you use, right? Which is focusing on reading and listening to material that is easy, that you can understand well, and have fun, right? So honestly, I made easy stories in English because I want there to be easy stories in English in other languages. I would love if there was easy stories in French, easy stories in German, easy stories in Thai, easy stories in Japanese. That would make learning a language much easier for me because I would just listen to the podcasts, right? So mainly I read a lot of books, I watch TV shows and I listen to podcasts. Anime Fights HD asks, do you like watching anime? Yes, I do. Um, if you don't know, anime is uh, Japanese cartoons, Japanese animation. So I used to watch a lot of anime, but I don't watch so much anime now, but I do really like anime. Right now I am watching um, Higurashi no Naku Koro ni, oh God, uh, Koro ni Sotsu. So this is, this is Japanese. Higurashi no Naku Koro ni Sotsu is the anime I'm watching now. It's a very scary anime, yeah? There's lots of <coughs> violence in it. And it's very sad. Every episode, I cry a lot. But it is really, really, really good. Uh, it's like the fifth, fourth or fifth in a series. You have to start with Higurashi no Nakakoro ni. But it is one of my favorite anime. Okay. Um... Margarita asks, could you give us some tips to learn a lot of languages? I'm freaking out with not losing my English while trying to improve my German. Brilliant question. So a lot of people have this worry. They worry that, oh, if I study, if I stop studying English and I study German, I'm going to forget my English, right? There are two things here. One, it depends what level you are. If I study, let's say, I don't know, Thai 
for a few months, I'm a beginner, right? If I then stop studying Thai and I study uh, Chinese, I will probably forget a lot of the Thai because it was only a bit that I learned. I was only a beginner. But if I study Thai for three years and then I take a break and I don't study Thai for one year and then I come back, I'll probably remember most of it because I was, you know, intermediate at that level, right? When you are at an intermediate level, you don't forget so quickly. So if you're already an intermediate level in English, you don't need to worry so much about losing it. Some people try to study every language at once, right? So like, oh, I'll uh, maintain my English, I'll keep my English at that level and study German at the same time. But that's very hard. I can't do that because I speak English, French, German, Spanish, Esperanto, Japanese, like I can't study all these languages at the same time. There's not enough time in the day to do that. So I don't. I study one language for a few months or a year and I work really hard on it. I get to a good level and then I stop and I leave it and I go to the next one. And I might forget a bit, but if I studied well and I read and listened lots, I won't forget too much. Okay. Refia asks, could you recommend film or series, so films or TV shows that you enjoyed and can help to improve our English? Sorry, I just realized I'm talking really loud and my throat hurts a bit. Luckily, we've only got 10 more minutes, so I don't have to destroy my voice. Um, that's a good question, Refia. I don't actually watch that much TV in English um, because I mainly watch it in other languages to study other languages. But I did do um, an email for my email newsletter about TV shows, I think. Let me just see if I can find it um, because I think I gave some recommendations there. Uh, do, 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 do. I'll just search for that. Okay. Sorry, if you hear, it's my computer. My computer gets uh, very loud when I do live streams, but I'm going to build a new computer. That's, no, okay. I cannot find this episode annoying, uh, sorry, this, this email annoyingly. So um, film or TV shows. I know some people really like Friends. Um, I don't know how easy it is, but I know Friends is a very popular TV show for learning English. Um, that's an American one. Um, for British comedies, um, some of my favorites are, let's see, Black Books. That's it. Oh, sorry, I can't, I can't actually see what I'm typing is the problem. Black Books, uh, what else? Um, to be honest, I think I can't recommend anything too specific because it depends on what you like. Right? If you like comedies, watch comedies. If you like action shows, watch action shows. If you like fantasy, watch fantasy. You know, it really depends on what you enjoy. So watch the shows that you enjoy and that you can understand well, I would say. Um, ooh, Leska, Leska Zavada, I love that name. Is that a uh, Polish or Czech? I don't know, but Leska Zavada is a Fantastic name. Leska says, hi, you are an incredible find for me. Are you planning to write a book with your stories? Well, Leska, I think you probably missed the beginning of the stream because doo -doo -doo, this is the book I have written and it is coming out on the 19th of July. Listen to the latest episode of the podcast for more details. <laughs> okay. Uh, or just come on the 19th of July at the same time as this stream, there will be a launch party to celebrate the launch of the book. Okay, Peachy says, in my country, Indonesia, 
We call bubble tea boba. Yeah, people also call it boba here, but um, some people use boba just to refer to the little bits in the bubble tea that you eat. Um, Lalita, Lalita is a listener from Thailand. Lalita asks, have you ever eaten Thai food? The answer is yes. Now, I love Thai food, but I can't eat very spicy food, very hot food. So um, I have to be careful with what Thai food I choose because some Thai food is really spicy. Okay, the arduous journey of becoming Jane. I'm just going to say Jane. Jane is easier. Jane says, I still remember the first time you celebrated your first birthday online. Yes. So last year I celebrated my 27th birthday on a live stream with you all. It was on the 5th of May because I couldn't celebrate in real life. But this year I celebrated with my girlfriend. So yeah, um, we played games. I showed you some tarot cards. I showed you birthday gifts. Yeah, it was it was really fun. I did think about doing a birthday live stream this year, but I actually just wanted to spend time with my girlfriend. So that's what I did. Okay. Ulkar says, hey, I saw you recently and I like you, your personality a lot. Uh, I like learning English with you. Thanks so much, Ulkar. Um, Leska asks, have I seen the anime Death Note? Yes. I have watched Death Note. Death Note is a very popular anime. I watched it when I was a teenager and I loved it very much. I also read some of the manga in Japanese. Um, anime Fights HD asks, how can I know my level? Uh, sorry if I bothered you because I'm asking a lot. Don't apologize, that's absolutely fine. Please ask lots of questions, okay? because I want to answer them. So how can I know my level? This is a really common question with English. A lot of students want to know, how do I know what level I am? My first answer is, is it that important? Is it that important to know your exact level? I don't think it's that important because all that matters is, can I understand this, right? This book, this TV show, this person, yeah? Your level is always going to vary. Your level will change depending on if you're talking to a British person or an American person or an Australian person, if you're tired, if you're hungry, if you're reading versus listening. It depends on the topic. Maybe you can understand books about one topic, but another topic you find more difficult. There are so many different factors, right? Levels are just a way for like teachers to say, okay, you're going in this class and you're going in this class, or it's a way to do exams. But really, it doesn't matter that much. And again, it's very hard to exactly say what someone's level is. There are so many factors. So all I would say is, don't worry too much about your level, just focus on how many hours you're doing, right? If you want to like measure something, because I know some people, I'm like this, we like to measure things. We like to say, I've done this, right? Measure what you can do. Say, I have, you know, I, I write down the time I spend learning languages. And then at the end of the year, I can say, okay, I studied 200 hours of German this year. And then I know that I've done that. I don't know exactly what my level is, but I know I've done 200 hours and that's really fantastic, okay? Uh, or maybe you say, I'm going to read a million words in Spanish. That's a, something I, I did. I had a challenge to myself to read a million words in Spanish years ago and I did it. Okay. Dark Mahmoud asks, what are my pronouns? Thank you for the question, Dark. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, Leska says, I'm from D Ukraine, but live in Dubai now. I'm looking forward to your launch party. Fantastic. Awesome. Um, I have not been to Ukraine or Dubai. 
but they both sound like very interesting places. Um, okay, and Leska also asks, uh, can one start speaking? Oop, there we go. Can one start speaking even incorrectly? So basically, is it okay to speak if I'm making mistakes? And my answer is absolutely. People think that if you make mistakes, you are going to make your English worse. That's not true. Mistakes are a normal part of language learning. All that a mistake means is your brain hasn't built the full model, the full picture of the language yet. And the only way we build that model is through reading and listening and communicating. If you make mistakes, it doesn't matter. You just need to read and listen more and your brain will correct that mistake, okay? But you can't correct the mistake by saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Because when you think about that too much, you can't speak normally. You're like, uh, ma, uh, 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 you know, you're thinking too much while you're talking and then you can't talk properly. So forget about mistakes. Make all the mistakes you want. If people can understand you, that's the most important thing. Okay? All right. It's been so lovely talking to you all. I think I'm going to stop there because we've been... Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Yes. I'm going to finish there for today because it's been about an hour and my throat's a bit dry. My glass of water is empty and um, I want to go lie on the sofa and play some video games. Oh, I've been playing a Hades a lot recently. Have any of you played a video game called Hades? I love it. Anyway... Um, it's been so nice catching up with you and talking to you all. There is another live stream in one week at exactly the same time. Actually, you can find the link on my YouTube channel already. After this stream, if you go to easystoriesinenglish.com slash stream, S-T-R-E-A-M, you will find the link to next week's live stream. And then the week after that, on the 19th of July, will be the launch party. Woo! A three-hour party to celebrate the launch of my book, where you can win a paper copy of the four levels of the book. So definitely come to the launch party and you might win some books. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been lovely. You're all saying thank you in the chat. It's been really fun. And yeah. Have a fantastic week. I'll see you soon. Bye. Mwah.